Hello everyone, welcome to the first video of Barry Harris Month. December is Barry Harris Month and we're gonna look at three or four Barry Harris solos. And in this video, it will be a solo on the chords of How High the Moon. Of course, Barry Harris is one of the foremost educators in the world of jazz and specifically bebop. And because I'm writing a book on bebop jazz guitar, I thought it'd be very helpful to study some of the solos of this maestro. Now, the recording I used to describe the solo is actually not a recording of How High the Moon. It's not even of Ornithology, which is Charlie Parker's contrafact on the changes of How High the Moon. This tune is called Luminescence, which I think might be a contrafact written by Barry Harris himself, I'm not sure now, but check out the original recording, it's linked in the description. In this video we're gonna look at the first half of this solo, and then I'll make another video later this week for my patrons at the $10 level with the second half of the course. So if you wanna check out the full solo, take a look at my Patreon, and uh, there's a link to that also in the description. Let's start with the first phrase. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four. Three, four. Four, one, two, three, four. Four, one, two. first motif was actually not played by Barry Harris, it was played by the saxophone that played the solo before him, but I decided to include it in the transcription because Barry Harris reacts to that motif with exactly the same motif, but changing the major third to the minor third, because the chords go from G major to G minor 7. And then we get the lick going from C7 to F major 7 or F6, but the lick is an F major 7 arpeggio. Resolving to F minor. And the nice thing, of course, is that Barry Harris decides not to play a 2 5 1 lick. He doesn't play something that goes from G minor 7, C7 to F, but instead he plays something that goes from C7, F, resolving to F minor, which is a resolution that you wouldn't expect, but it works great and it's um, makes the solo more interesting. If you almost play the two five ones, that's predictable. But if you decide to connect the one chord of a two five one to the next chord, in this case it's F to F minor, you create something that is unexpected. One, two. And then we arrive at phrase number two. Three, four, one, two. One, two. This phrase starts in the middle of the two five one two E flat, so on B flat seven to E flat, and then the changes go A half diminished, D7 to G minor. Notice that Barry Harris is not actually outlining A half diminished, D7, but instead he stays on E flat because he plays, that's a nice phrase for B flat seven, resolving to E flat six, but he's still on E flat six or E flat major seven, this is an E flat major seven arpeggio, with the chords going A half diminished, D7. And you can always skip a chord if you want to, but in this case it works really well because if you play an E flat major 7 arpeggio on top of a D bass, you get a D7 sus flat 9 sound. A way to play it would be like this. That sound, that's a pretty sound to play on D7 anyway, so it works out great. And then we arrive at uh, the third phrase, which is the last phrase of this video. Three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four. 
One, two. If you want to get access to a downloadable tab, the same tab that you see on screen, um, it's available on my Patreon and that will be available for my patrons at the $5 level. And the follow-up video is for my patrons at the $10 level. Now, before we go to this phrase, I want to once again mention that I've just released a book and it's a book that would take you from zero skill in jazz improvisation on guitar to a pretty advanced level. And here's a small Instagram ad that I made especially for this book. Hello everyone, you just listened to a jazz guitar solo on the chords of the tune Ergin. If you are a guitar player and you always wanted to play jazz but had no idea where to start, I have a solution for you. I just released a book called The Van Hamert System, which describes the system I used myself to learn how to improvise like you just heard. The methodology is completely based on learning a couple of shapes across the guitar neck that will enable you to improvise on every jazz standard you can think of. Of course, it's gonna take a while to become proficient at playing those shapes and how to apply them, but you don't have to learn anything else. No music theory, no skills, no arpeggios, no fretboard identification, no ear training, just learning those shapes and how to apply them. That's what I did myself and you just saw the result. If you are interested in learning to play jazz guitar like that and you are in the US, order my book in the web store of jungleguitars.com and if you are in Europe, send a mail to this email address. Bye. Okay, let's take a closer look at that third phrase. So the first part, Barry Harris stays on G minor from the previous bar. So again, not outlining the A half diminished D7, resolving to B minor, but um, Barry Harris resolves it to G. which of course is the same as B minor in the key of G. If we're in the key of G, then the third degree will be B minor. But anytime you see a third degree in a major key, you can just treat it as one. So this B minor is the same as G. Now it resolves to a C and playing this. That's very interesting because the chord there would be E7. Now I'm not actually sure that maybe on the recording of Luminescence, they play B flat diminished, but Barry Harris is thinking B minor, B flat diminished, A minor, instead of B minor, E7. It doesn't really matter though what the chords are because you can always do that. Anytime you get 2-5 to another 2-5, two, 2 frets lower, you can always play a diminished chord in between those two minor chords instead of the 5. So you, instead of playing B minor 7, E7, you play B minor, B flat diminished. The first phrase, resolving to C, would still uh, make you think of E7 flat 9, but then that's really B flat diminished. Resolving to a, a minor third of A minor. And then we have a great scalar 251 bebop lick. That's a great lick to practice in all keys. Very easy to find. You just put your first finger on the third of the, of the minor chord. Let's say we're in, in the key of C. So then you put your first finger on F. And then you resolve to, in this case, C. Or if we're in the key of G. That was the first half of this really great bebop chorus played by Barry Harris. Hopefully I will see you soon in the second video, either on my Patreon, where we're gonna explore the second half, or in the next video here on my YouTube channel, and we're gonna look at a solo played by Barry Harris on rhythm changes. Bye.